All right, now that we have our inbots assembled, hopefully you had a chance to watch the video on how to connect your inbot. If not, I'll briefly talk about it now. So if you look at your inbot uh, on the core, if you're reading the make block right side up, on the right, it says USB. So that's where you want to plug in your USB 2.0 cord that came with the inbot. I'm going to go ahead and place my inbot upside down so it doesn't roll away on me. And now I'm going to go over to my my, my uh, software here, in block, and I'm going to hit connect and connect. Now if you didn't see in block on the left here, you may have to go to add and quickly add the in bot. I already have it, so I'm good to go. First thing I'm going to do if you haven't done so yet is settings, update firmware just because you want to make sure your firmware is up to date. You don't have to do this every single time and usually it notifies you if there is an update. But if it is the first time you are plugging into your inbot, you definitely want to update your inbot. Shouldn't take too long. Now when you're when it's done updating, usually you have to reconnect to your robot. So I'm going to say connect again. And we're connecting via USB, not Bluetooth, not 2.4G. And if you don't see it there, if you don't see the um, inbot available, most likely you need to turn on your inbot. The inbot must be turned on in order to, uh, in order for the computer to be able to recognize it. All right, so now I'm connected. It's on upload mode. Uh, you could use live mode, but live mode you need to t keep your computer tethered to the inbot the whole time, and that can be difficult sometimes. So I'm going to stick to upload where we send the code to the robot once and then we keep running it over and over to the robot. Whereas with live, you can um, activate the robot here and stop the robot here uh, right underneath the sprite. So upload again, uh, let's see. So to start our, to start off, we need the hat block when M block core startup. And that basically means when you turn the switch from off to on. So what do you want the robot to do when you turn it from off to on? Let's just do some very basic move forward, move left. Uh, let's see. So we're going to move forward. So there's two ways you can move forward. You can move forward at 50%, at 50 that's 50% power for one second. And then it's going to automatically stop. Or the other way you can do this is to simply say move forward at 50%. And then we go to the controls. We'll tell it to wait for one second. And after one second of moving forward, stop. So there's two ways that you can code your inbot to move forward for one second at 50%. Now there's advantages and disadvantages to, to, eat to both ways. I'm going to let you try both and I'll let you decide which one works best for you. But there are many, many ways you can code your robot. So I'm going to go with the what seems to be the shorter method for now. So let's just move forward 50% for one second. Um, after one second, I'm going to have it turn right 50% for one second. And then I'll have it turn left. And then that should create some sort of zigzag. And let's see what that looks like. I actually forgot to mention that we need to hit upload. So now that I have my robot here connected and I have my code ready, I'm going to hit upload and now it's going to send this information to the inbot and when it's done my inbot's going to start moving there it is you probably hear it it start moving because the inbot was already on so as soon as the robot as soon as the code uploaded it recognized it was on and it moved through the code so I'm going to go ahead and switch it off place it on the floor and then switch it back on I'll show you what that looks like in a second here All right, so hopefully your robot was successful when you tried this. Uh, I want to make a few modifications to make this a little bit easier for me. Uh, the first modification I'm going to make is I'm going to add some weights just because I need a little bit of separation between the time that I hit the on button and the time that it starts moving. And I'm going to copy and paste this because I want to use a few weights here. 
after each uh, movement, I want it to give it a little bit of a pause just so we can uh, see the difference. I'm going to delete there and get rid of that. Um, also, I'm going to add one, one more move forward here. So move forward. I will add that after the turn. Now, if I put it before the turn, if I were to place this move forward above the turn, it's going to it's going to move forward. And then after the wait, it's going to move forward again before it turns. But that's not what I want. What I want is I want it to turn first and then make the make the do the go forward. All right. So I'm going to connect back up to my robot. It's not connected, although it is plugged in. And here you can see it's plugged in and it is on and it's already moving. I'm going to upload the new code. And when you upload the new code, it's going to override whatever you had there before. All right, let's give this a try. So the last thing I wanted to talk about uh, once you've seen the video of my rover is that my rover is not, it's, it is turning for one second in both directions. And that turn is almost a 180 degree turn. So if you wanted to make a 90 degree turn, you would have to either modify the time or the percentage. So you'll have to play around with those numbers and figure out what works best for a perfect 90 degree turn. Or if you want to do a different turn, maybe you wanted to turn um, more than 90 degrees or less than 90 degrees, then you'll have to play around with those numbers to see what that looks like. Now, another way you can turn, I'm not going to show you an example, but I'm going to explain it, is this block here says let left wheel turns at 50% power, right wheel turns at 50% power. So here you can, with this, you can do what's called a pivot turn where you can make the two wheels turn counter, uh, counter to each other. So I can say negative 50. So now the left wheel is going to turn forward at 50 to at 50% 50 power while the right wheel is going to turn backwards at 50%, negative 50% power. So this is another way you can do turns. Uh, if you do this way, then you have to not only tell it what percent, but you also have to tell it to wait a certain time. So you're pretty much combining uh, two, the two blocks here, the, uh, the wait and the turn. Um, but now this is going to allow you to do other things as well. So go ahead and play around with that. And um, yeah, that should, you should be good.